Awesome. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, I really appreciate your time. It's been a bit of time with the end of the semester coming up with final reviews and final projects, everything like that. So I really appreciate your time. Uh, my name is Olivia Cordy. I'm the firm outreach coordinator for AIS. I'd like to also introduce Katie Basta. Uh, she's been kind of kickstarting and directing IIDA, which is the interior design organization. Uh, we're doing a new uh, cage. It's our new chapter here at KU. Very exciting with that. Um, so this semester we've been bringing a series of firm visits to you guys to kind of show you different options about the firm world um, in both architecture and interiors. Um, I'll go ahead and drop the handles for our Instagram, um, AIS and IDA. Hold on, let me grab it real quick. If you guys want to follow us on Instagram um, and DM us and we'll get you more information that way as well. Um, so without further ado, I will introduce Anna Pinto Alexander. Uh, she's director of health interiors and principal at HKS, and she's graciously office, offered her time today uh, to come talk to us about sustainable materials, um, kind of the design process, exper experiential design. Um, so she'll be give a presentation for most of the time, but there will be an opportunity at the end to ask any questions you have. Um, we'll have a short Q and A then. So be thinking of anything you're curious about. You can either unmute or send your questions in the chat at that point. Um, I will then turn over to Anna. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's really a pleasure to be here. I thought I would just uh, give you a little bit of my background before we um, start with the presentation. Um, as you can notice, I have a, um, an accent, <laughs> but I'm not from here. I, I was born in Bogota, Colombia, and I came to United States um, um, around 18, when I was 18 years old, but I have been in United States for over 34 or five years, and I still have an accent. I, I, I always tease, I came to, uh, my father sent me to a small little Catholic college in Northern Kentucky, and I said, that's why I have an accent, because I learned English in Kentucky. No offense to anyone in Kentucky, love that state, okay? And then I transferred to Purdue University, where I graduated, and always stayed in Indiana for um, most of my career until like um, three or four years ago, I re we relocated to, take to Dallas because of HKS. I um, also graduated from Purdue University and then um, work in um, K through 12, always in interior design, working always with architectural firms. And then um, um, around in 2000, I was given the opportunity to start my own business and I did. And we started like with six designers and we grew to 22 designers. And at that moment I was a WBE, which is a woman owned enterprise and an MBE, a minority owned enterprise. And we're always specialized in healthcare or life sciences and laboratories for universities. So design a lot of, um, uh, like a nanotechnology uh, um, building. And I was always working with architectural firms or biochemical engineering, biomedical engineering. Um, so when I would work with universities, we, um, like I didn't do the classrooms or auditoriums or any of those fun spaces or the student union. And we were always considered to be in laboratories. And then moving forward in around 2011, uh, we were acquired by HKS. Um, and then, um, so all 22 design, we grew up to be 22 designers in Indianapolis and Chicago. And then the acquisition happened in 2011, and then we all went to HKS. And since then I have been the director of, of health interiors for HKS. And one of my biggest responsibility it is to really inter integrate medical planning with architecture, with interiors, with um, engineering, um, because everything works together in a building. Um, there is a, we always have to work with all of our consultants. HKS only have a structural engineering. We do not have any other uh, of that kind of engineering. But now more than ever. Um, we are seeing a mixture um, and also with research. We are a research led practice and um, especially with healthcare, you know, you've heard about evidence-based uh, based design. It was like evidence-based medicine, like, um, you know, trials and they do trials and they, um, they figure out um, how many people they work and then the medicine launches. It's the same thing with healthcare design, there is um, being a lot of data collected and a lot of studies collected and uh, tons of uh, relationships with universities like 
Cornell University, UCLA, um, and all of these researches, because it is important to do research. So today I am bringing you, um, I have kind of two presentations. One that we speak about how we integrate a design and it's actually an actual project. And perhaps I can come back to you guys later, maybe, um, and then show you the progress of our design. Um, but how uh, I thought that it was important to show a real project and how we are starting right now um, into um, develop and shape this space based on research or the patient experience. Now we also bring the research, many other research into everything that we do, but we customize it to this particular client. So I am going to um, share my screen. So um, this is in the University of Iowa and we are working with a local architect. So these um, buildings are president buildings from the University of, of Iowa in Iowa City. So um, we're doing a freestanding uh, hospital, but it is more towards orthopedics. It's, um, so we do have, um, um, goodness, like 12 operating rooms and they're quite large because when you do orthopedics, there is an incredible amount of equipment into the operating room. So, but um, I just wanted to also um, speak to you a little bit about um, how the design and how is the vision of, of the design. And in this in case, because it is orthopedic and our body has a movement and, um, and also attention. So we wanted to show this in, in, in the project. Um, how are we looking into movement and how are we also honoring the demographics we're serving and the, the place in, in Iowa is in Iowa. So we are taking inspiration from the Iowa landscape. And um, so we, and you will see right now some uh, porosity that we're showing on the bone. You know, the bone structure is very hard and linear actually when you look at the bone exterior, but interior is very uh, porous. And uh, um, so we wanted to start showing those repetitions of, of the body into the interior um, architecture and the exterior design and how we, there is a connection and tension on a bone, you know, you go like this, you, you constantly moving. So, um, but how are we interpreting in perhaps in our details? So we are architecture and interiors, we're going to a very clean architecture and a very clean interiors. Um, there is no fuss about it. So um, I'm sorry, then, um, I'm going to show you a little bit. This is from a research team. So a research team made with many users, um, uh, staff, um, patients, family members. And, um, and then we wanted to see what is it that they really are after um, in an emotional state. How are we going to do um, this space, how are people, where are the, those touch points where it's so important to people to make a decision on to judge. Um, I don't know if you know much about healthcare, but right now, um, because of the Obamacare, it, we went through a process that the reimbursement that happens between Medicaid and Medicare to the hospital, it is all based in the um, surveys results that patients and family members do. So how, what experience do they have? So they rate you whether you are a good hospital, a medium hospital or a bad hospital. So the um, human experience and connection and the touch points have become extremely important. So right now they feel, our client feels that they are really excellent in what they do, um, but they are more regional and they want to be exceptional because they want to be a center um, that, that will attract people from all over um, the country and the world. So how are we going to move from being an excellent to exceptional? And then we go into, you know, a place that is excellent, is friendly and comfortable, but exceptionally is a place that, um, that it is more welcoming and it is safe. In a way, right now, safety, we are also um, defining safety more, uh, you know, um, into a clean, that is very clean, not safety of protected of, um, 
you know, safety or being attacked or anything like that. Um, right now, you all, we all have lost our sense of safety. And um, so how are we going to regain it? And then, um, then we also are moving from, uh, so excellent is already like the baseline. And when you go into exceptional, then it is those moments that it makes you more delight, that there is something that delights you. So we're trying to design something that delights the patient. And, not, and right now, so much attention is being put into the staff as because have you heard, all of the staff has been um, hit so hard emotionally and physically with all this pandemic. So the, the light is shining on creating uh, dignified spaces for the staff. Then this is just a continuation of, um, you, you know, what we're trying to do, um, that it is a cheerful sp space that is organized. Um, for example, uh, the existing facility uh, has a really challenging wayfinding. Um, they even spoke about Feng Shui, which is the energy that you um, flow through the space that it is efficient. Um, so every operation um, from when the moment uh, supplies enter the building, how they're distributed, how they come out, um, everything is uh, very much in operational efficiency and, and that is adaptable. And, you know, people say it is flexibility. Well, what is flexibility? Well, it is also a space that is adaptable that I can go from one, um, to offer something and then adapted to offer something else. Um, so this is where, where we talk about with after many surveys and many interviews, this is the conclusion that we, we uh, learn from that research team. Now, how are we going to translate this into interior architecture and, and the journey of the patient going from the moment they park the car or they enter? Um, the medical center um, to create all of these uh, to be an exceptional experience. So um, the research team develop these experience principles and um, it is important to take the time before you start designing solutions to understand what is the issue and what is the desire. Many times as architects and interior designers, we are jumping always to, to solve the issue and to um, uh, propose a solution rather than taking our time to understanding that emotional connection that us human have with this space. So in the experience principle, and you can read it, I'm gonna read it, they were very important words that they call it res restorative, inclusive, intuitive, flexible, and functional. So those design principles we translated into design, what is a restorative environment? Well, it is a restorative environment to be um, an, that supports your well-being. You always need to have connection to the outdoor and how we can integrate the indoors in the outdoors. It could be with biophilic design. And when I mean biophilic design, it is not putting a picture of the outdoors. It is... Uh, the bone is biophilia. Maybe we uh, interpret that porosity of the patterning of the bone into a ceiling, and I'll show you some examples. Um, or do we create a very, um, uh, we are right now looking into uh, a green wall, uh, perhaps that we can do it with, a, there's some dry moss that we can uh, do that. How are we going to be uplifting, you know, and restorative is also a place that it gives you a little bit of joy and, and vitality. So, and the finishes and the coloration and the combination between it, artificial light and natural light keeps you those moments of uh, joyful moments into the space. Um, how are we going to be uh, connected um, and welcoming and of course accessible, especially in ortho orthopedic center, we cannot have any barriers. So we have to have a frictionless space. Um, and um, that is also a personalized experience. For example, in the patient rooms that um, you can, if it's too cold, you can control the temperature, which didn't used to happen that way, or you can control the shades or control the lighting from, from where you are on the bed. And that is intuitive, and we call it um, intuitive wayfinding. 
um, uh, that is also that you can, maybe the first time you can ask direction, but the second time you just know how to navigate because there are cues of the environment that reminds you of something. And then that is uh, flexible or adaptable um, and uh, for the proximity and the efficient. So everything is very convenient. So as you can see, these are the experience principles and how we are tying it into the design principles. So now I'm gonna kind of give you that connection of the built environment to, um, uh, to the research and the emotional connection that um, they're looking for in order to provide an exceptional space. These are inspiration, uh, inspiration images. These are not um, the, um, um, you know, the design of our space, but, but again, we curated these images we already with the style that we're going to go into, that is gonna be clean. Um, for example, if you can see where we call also biophilia, this could be a porosity, a little bit of the porosity of the bones, or it could be this, and it will be represented on the ceiling. And then um, we do always integrating a presentation, a little bit of um, image that very inspirational because we know to tell them, we know this is an orthopedic um, place and how we can have, and when we said a uh, restorative and in the seating, but then, then we'll take it all from the public area to the, in, the, the um, inside, like an, uh, an MRI room. And then, sorry, um, also balancing, balancing natural light and artificial light to give you a restorative, uh, paying attention to the circadian rhythm Right now we have some wonderful light choices and they are becoming more reasonable that perhaps we can um, add the circadian rhythm. Um, we are doing that more in the spaces for um, the staff and the nurses. Uh, you know, it's still a little expensive. So we are doing it more in the nurses because they have long shifts, 12 hours, and if it's a night shift, so that the light it is um, modified. So you go with the circadian, uh, circadian rhythm um, and then it will be ideal if we can do it on the patient, um, but, but sometimes that uh, is just costly. Um, but also how we can um, um, address indirect lighting, you know, things that, um, you know, that has a, a softer lighting that is not in the patient's eyes. And then as you can see, also the lighting that we are looking for is more illuminating the walls than like, for example, the floor or things. So you illuminate the walls, uh, how a natural design, it just makes you feel um, a, the three-dimensionality of the space makes it, it's just better. Um, how are we going to um, uplift, you know, how the interior palette, so we are, um, we usually do the general palette of finishes a neutral because they're going to be there for a long time, like a floor or our cabinets or our uh, countertops if we're doing quartz of solid surface. But then we can add color uh, in our alpostries, maybe uh, some paints or maybe some wall protection. But as you can see, um, we are starting to see how light reflects. And then we happen to have a very long corridor. So also whatever patterning we do in the exterior, we are already studying it. How is it going to affect in the interiors on this, for example, on this wall, if we do that, how are we gonna treat it so they don't fight, but they complement each other. We also have a lighting consultant in this project helping us with this lighting. And, um, you know, because it is important that, that lighting is, is, is crucial for, for that. Um, it looks in, in considerably, that means connectivity, that um, also, also waiting areas that they're close to the reception so people do not feel like you've forgotten about it, but also having some opening that you can go in here into your uh, clinic or your area um, and it is a little bit more open. Um, like, like why welcoming, like this is in, in one of our projects that we have done in a nourishing center within the patient room, that there's always fresh fruit and water, and in here you can go for some coffee, and there is microwaves, and just to give uh, the, the family members extra uh, amenities, and um, but also um, that is that you always remain connected, you know, um, even um, with now being all virtual, if um, not that we can go to hospitals to take care of our loved one, but we will be able to go to our hospitals to take care of our, our loved ones, that we can then uh, continue working 
in there. Um, then uh, also the movement, how do we do um, the movement is very, um, you know, you, you do it through, um, you know, a, a wall, expressing of the wall or the exterior wall that it just shows a very clear where you go in, in the movement. Or you can also have some movement into the um, nurse stations too, that it just it, it requires a little bit of movement. And that's why I'm showing you images from the um, lobby, the private to semi-private, you know, the whole thing, um, that it is also, um, inviting um, and how we can comfortable, you know, you can sit comfortably, although we are looking very careful on, on these settings because until we are not all completely, our confidence is back, we are always gonna keep our distances when we're sitting um, uh, from place to place, you know, it's not, um, things have really changed in our behavior right now. And then um, that is organized, you know, just kind of like a like a kakudu, that it has hierarchy. Same thing in here that it is organized. And how are we going to help you as a patient, um, as a family member, help you navigate uh, through it? Uh, perhaps, you know, and then we wanted to also have something elegant. So we are starting to do some concepts of, of wayfinding. Maybe this is for our clinics. Um, we do want to curb some walls. Uh, rather than being a very sharp corner like this, maybe more curving uh, as when we have people navigating the space. We're also playing and starting to introduce quilts. And Iowa, uh, I mean, the history of Iowa quilts is just so important for folklore and for, for the, the region. But how can we then um, interpret a quilt in a sophisticated way and also maybe help us with wayfinding? Perhaps we can interpret a quilt and University of Iowa, their colors are yellow and how we do their branding, but just minimum, maybe we can do one of these little um, arrows could become a little yellow. And we, we're just throwing ideas right now. We're not doing, you know, anything yet. Um, but then it's just uh, all these images that I have shown so far, you know, this space is organized because it has repetition, it has very clean lines. There is no fussiness about it. Um, and there is a hierarchy in design. And then, um, also that is spacious, you know, people do not want to feel like they are in a, in a cramped space. So we um, show also how it is, um, that it is safety, that it is uh, friendly as well. Um, for, like in our, we do have a very large um, sports medicine and that's where they want to reach out to like the professional NFL teams and things. So that, that's where they're investing on, on this. Um, because their doctors want to reach out to a, a, a greater um, audience, I guess. Okay, so I think this is all I have so far. Any questions or anything um, that, that you have right now? Should I keep going? Now I'm gonna shift gears a little bit um, into uh, sustainability and how as designers, we're trying to find simplicity and ease of understanding all of these different um, categories and all of these different certifications, you know, um, because um, it's, it gets very confusing for us as designers. And we are not chemistries, you know, we're not in a chemistry world, but um, we do know enough to understand. So thank goodness there are organizations are out there who can dissect uh, this for us. And, we also, I wanted to also share with you all of the big firms and little firms in, in architecture and design got together and had written a letter to all of the manufacturers asking for transparency of all of their products. Um, there are several manufacturers who have complained, complain, uh, complied, I'm sorry, and um, and is now um, you know, offering products that they are really sustainable and healthy. Where it started is, I, you probably have heard from, from history is about asbestos, correct? I mean, asbestos was actually a very, uh, for durable material, it was excellent. It was uh, something that it will make uh, the uh, 
ceiling tile, the floor tile, any tile so durable. But then they realized that it was durable, but it was really harmful for humans. And they noticed it to those who were uh, excavating asbestos and those in the fabricating asbestos and installing them or remove them. They start seeing an incredible amount of cancer and really incredible uh, illness. The same thing happened with lead. Lead used to be in paint because it so makes it so strong. And then we realize, oh my God, it can make you really, really sick and almost, you know, uh, cause death. But it took us um, around 15 to 20 years knowing that these were harmful chemicals to be removed through Congress, to pass Congress and everything else. We cannot afford that anymore because there are thousands and thousands of chemicals right now being produ produced that are not regulated. And, um, and it's very difficult. So the, we are reaching to the chemical industry to, for them to help us understand this. And so where we are taking it is we, we went to a challenge to a lot of the materials. Tell us what you have. It's like your ingredients you know, list. What is it you have? So it's, it's a little bit uh, disorganized, right? And then we have lead. And then we've seen that lead is excellent. It addresses many, many good things, but it's also a point, you know, it's like, oh, I covered this, I covered that, but is it necessary or not? I mean, there is a lot of, of, of questions up with lead that um, just to get a point, it might be an expense that, um, that is not necessary. And then we have the living building challenge. Um, and then we also have the well building standard that uh, we are actually, the well building standard is a very comprehensive because it goes to the well being of the individual, the uh, air that we breathe, uh, the water that we drink in the building, uh, the snacks that we eat. So it goes really incredible into um, a, um, a, a very comprehensive and holistic approach. So we had all of these, um, the challenges here is that we have multiple declarations and certifications and screening programs, like the clear label level, uh, cradle to cradle, um, you know, the HPDs, the EPDs, which is the one who tells you what has in every product and then the transparency that they share, they all go and they're consolidating in this. Um, but we do know that when something is declared or cradle to cradle, we do know as designers that it's, it's, it's a good, good product to use. And, uh, you know, and this is not inexpensive for these companies to go through and prove that they are, they have these labels. So we created um, mindful materials. I mean, it, it was um, uh, effort that it was uh, created with a couple of other manufacturers and, and to say, okay, as designers, we need to have an easy button that tell us, okay, what's good and what's bad. I don't have time to go and research everything and understand, you know, how complicated things are and complex. So this mindful material, it is a resort that you put all of this, it's a library. It is not a certification, but it's a library. And so we created this in 2014, and then we um, launched it in, um, in the uh, Materials Health Summit in Chicago, and then we gave that to, to the world, I guess. And now we don't own any part of it. And this is something that I have to tell you among competitors when it comes to sustainability, it's an equal field. Everybody is like the competition goes away. And because we all know an incredible responsibility that we have as humans and as designers to design in healthy spaces. And um, so it, will, it created and now we have a collaborative website and then they are working right now with educating clients and educating our contractors on these incredible um, you know, clean materials. So mindful materials is just a, a big um, resort that you can use. You don't have to pay to join. It is um, that they are all together. So when you go and then we also develop a little um, sticker to put in all of your, in your binding bins and all of your finishes that it tells you, uh, for example, if it's a, it's a shawl carpet, then they will come and say, okay, we have HPD and declare an EPD. 
So as designer, when I go I'm, and I'm selecting something in my library, I go and take it and it's like, oh, this is already taken care of. And I don't have to go and look at everything. I just know this part of my info material. So I know I have a healthy material to deal with. So it was just to make it easy. And this is just, um, it's a uh, searchable uh, database. Uh, you can go per manufacturer, you can go by name and it tells you exactly what they have, the VOC, they, they tell you everything about the ingredients so you know what it is. And this is uh, how the product page. So for example, you can Google my info material. You do have to register, uh, but as being a designer, uh, a student or anything, you can absolutely register with this. And then these are the um, ingredients uh, report that we we use and we see, um, uh, but you see there are a lot, and it is kind of a little hard to to understand, you know, what to look at it. But this is just kind of like a, a guideline. And it, this is basically like at the nutrition level. We're asking, you know, how we didn't used to do that and now we are all looking make sure I have the right amount of sugars you know because we as a society we are eating four times more sugar than we should and that's why it's an overweight and it's a fat is it is it a good fat or is it a bad fat you know um and sodium is also that we look at it so you look at it at Cheerios you all look at everything else we can certainly look at what is in the floor you know, if I have a PVC free floor, if I have sulfates, and we do know of like seven chemicals who are in a lot of the materials in the fabrics that we are really um, trying to avoid. And especially right now, and I'm going to start sharing, um, especially right now, where we have, um, you know, with, with the COVID, that everybody is saying antibacterial, we have to sell antibacterial, and it is absolutely not antibacterial. If you put an antibacterial chemical into a finishes, it is, it only protects the finish. It does not protect us human, and is one more chemical that we can breathe, we can taste. If you have a fabric, so for example, all these fabrics that says we have an antimicrobial, we put an antimicrobial in the fabric, we know that the fabric is to protect it from mold, the fabric, not you, the human. So um, we really are against antimicrobial on any menu, anything that they, they can put is, we, I, we don't think it's healthy and it, ha, it might have adverse uh, results to your body um, because you know, they're, they're unintended consequences. So, um, you know, if I, if I can maybe um, share with you a couple of things is, is that we do need to be mindful on um, health and we need to be uh, remembered that we are designing for humans. And especially in our case for um, in healthcare, they already have an, uh, an immune compromised system. And then we have to give them healthy materials. We just have to. Um, so. I, I'm, I'm open it for questions. If you need um, have a curiosity or or anything, I'm I'm happy to um, be happy to to answer any concerns or questions. Thank you. I can start with one if no one else has. Thank one. Thank you, Olivia. Yeah. Um, so with HKS, how do you guys decide which certification to go with at the beginning of a project? Do you go with multiple or what's the decision process like? Well, the client plays a big role on that decision. Uh, you know, so um, sometimes we go both lead and well, um, but the difference is that you are a lead building and you, you know, you have the categories is one certification. The well is every three years. So you might be well for three years and then you lose it. And it's expensive to go through, through each of them. So it all depends on the client. However, we are telling our clients, we will give you a healthy building regardless whether you go for certification or not. It is not a choice, we are not. And sometimes um, the ones that we encounter obstacles is our contractors, because sometimes they want to change the, the material because it's maybe cheaper or more. Um, it is right now, it's accessible. Um, right now we're seeing, um, because you know the shipping industry is really backlogged, um, they are changing our materials because it's just, um, it's, it's going to be late for the job site, so they will change it. And, and we are seeing a, a turning to American made, but you know, we're failed to understand a lot. 
most of the vinyl floors, even their PVC, they're not made in the United States. They're made in Korea, they're made in China, they're made in Germany. Um, all the rubber flooring is not made in United States. So oh, even though they do have huge warehouses, sometimes in, in Houston, New York, you know, the big ports is where they have their warehouses, um, but there's occasionally that they don't have enough. So we are seeing shortage of, of materials and then they shift it, they change it, the, our contractors change them. Awesome, thank you. Well, are you guys working on what kind of project are you working right now? I'm gonna start calling you, how about Dalma? What kind of project are you working right now? So I'm in the same class as Olivia, Katie, and a couple of other people in this uh, call. And we're working pretty much right now with the well certification. Uh, some of us are doing hospitality. They're working on a hotel. And I am doing a little something different. I'm adding, I'm working at an airport, but it has a hotel inside of my airport. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the same thing, just different site. Um, and it's the first time we learn about well. Mm -hmm. So it was really cool to know that it's only for three years of certification, and then you have to renew that. I had no idea about that. Uh -huh. So that's cool. Yeah, I um, mean, uh, we um, are doing, we, all of our offices, when we're remodeling or renovating, we're going for well. For example, we have one, um, the Chicago office, where we call it the Living Lab. Um, and that office is, um, um, we, we made a well, uh, well gold and a lead platinum. And, but it is so hard sometimes to do well when you have an old building, you are within a building, right? And um, especially the air ventilation uh, and the water, if you don't, you have whole pipes that are coming, you have no control where the water is coming from, but then you have to put that extra filtration in your space. So you have healthy water coming in. And um, there is, um, you know, the biophilia, you know, everybody uh, in how we were creating the small little gardens that people take care of them. And uh, so, and then we have also a London office that we were going to the certification and we just pulled it off because, you know, um, England has been hit super hard. I mean, our economy has been hit hard here. Well, I don't know why London has been hit so hard and um they're just all the projects when you know that so we had to sublease our office we had the most beautiful office we had to sublease it because i mean financially and and we got a suble uh, and then it was like in two floors so the first level was subleased and um a lot of our nourishment center then our nourishment that really nice kind of place where everybody can go and eat and um, they were down there. And so you cannot claim it now because we are in the first floor and then they are in the lower level. And also, um, I mean, like in London, the air quality of London is one of the worst in the city, and so in the world, you know? So um, they did talk to the, um, um, uh, the owner of the building if they could reseal all of the windows because it's an old building 1920, so is um, you cannot touch it. But he, the the uh, owner, the landlord, sealed everything. But you still have operable windows. But the air quality is so terrible in London that it is not um, uh, encouraged to open the windows because actually the air inside is much better. And then they were put some incredible filtration system um, into all of that, and then. Um, also the water, they had issue with the water and right now we have uh, the good water, but um, in, in the space and uh, the lighting is, is lovely. And then they have community, they, they used to open it to the community. They had a big well that we call it the well, but now that went to the leaser, you know, and then so the, the person who uh, is our subli, so we we can claim that. So in several things, we, we just had to pull back, unfortunately, until maybe when the economy gets better and the sublease are left and leaves and then we can have the whole space then we can recertify it. But we lost um, several things. And there, you know, if you're going to 
the air, the air quality and the particles per air and um, and how the, you know, another thing is very important is the wa water nourishment, nourishment um, the well-being of the individuals. We have then do some policies too in London and also in here about maternal leave and paternal leave. Um, we have uh, non-gender uh, toilets and um, to, you know, no, no, for no uh, discrimination. So there is a lot of social uh, policies that we have done in London. They smoke a lot. And so we also encourage people to stop smoking and being healthy. But in London, also a lot of people walk tons. And then they they have um, bicycles, you know, they go to the office and we buy. So uh, out in the bottom, there is a huge bike rack that you can store your bike. We will also meet because the well has been created in United States. And for the most part in United States, you know, there's very, uh, maybe New York, you can have, um, you won't have a car, but for the most part, we all have a car, right? And, and access to the outdoors. Well, in the city of London, that it is so crazy, there is a park close to the office but it's not close enough that it counts for well. But for London standards, like it's so close to the office, you know? So, but we couldn't submit it for the well points. So they went through everything to find out, can we make it or not? And we probably were 85%. So we just pulled the certification. I mean, like last week, we pulled the- Anna, I'm, I'm gonna have to sign off here, but I wanna thank you. Sure. If, if I could just make one brief comment for those students that are not aware of it, HKS is one of the premier architectural firms in the world. And we've thank had a very you. wonderful relationship with them. Kate Renner, who's one of the graduates of our health and wellness program, yep. is one of the rock stars in the DC office. Oh, we have she a, is. Uh, we have a number of uh, KU alumni there. Zach Overschmidt in the was started out as an intern, and we uh, in the in the Dallas office, and now is employed. And we have a number of I think we have an intern coming there from Health and Wellness. Mm -hmm. So, if you ever want to get any student feedback on HKS, just let us know. But uh, I, I apologize, I'm going to have to leave. Yeah. But I, I, I appreciated you, so you letting much, me Frank. sit in and listen. And yeah. HKS is absolutely top notch. Thank you so much for that shout out. If it's, it's, it means the world to us, you know, thank you so much. And we are very committed to our, um, right now, to um, diversity and equality in all of our designs, too. You know, it just, um, how can we not, you know? But yeah, we have several graduates from your university in, uh, at HKS. Yes. Okay. I have a question for you, Anna. So um, you were mentioning like green walls. Uh, it looks like you incorporate that a lot into your designs. I'm actually working like, well, I was working on it like five minutes ago or later um, on a green wall presentation. And there's different kinds of green walls that you can go to. Which one is the one that you guys typically use? Oh my God, I love, if I'm gonna share, let me just look for it right now. I met with them last week. It is um, um, the garden on the wall. Garden on the wall is the one that I absolutely, let me, right now, and I can, let me see if I can copy this in the chat. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, because okay. I was working on that and there was just so many. Uh, I know, I know. And I what I like about this. So this garden on the wall has um the moss. And, I mean, you can make many things. Um, the moss, um, it is already kind of dry and it doesn't because it's um modified, of course, it doesn't collect dust. That's why I can put it in a hospital, but in the lobby. Of course, we, we never put anything green behind, you know when we see a patient but in the lobby you can do it and then uh, and then it's, it doesn't it repels dust and uh so and you can make many uh designs um and it is around uh, we always ask for pricing around 190 dollars per square foot so it's not cheap um and if you use the more texture ones it could go for uh, 210 a square foot uh, but where we do it, it is between we share is between art and the building, you know. Um, so we <clears throat> we balance the budget, and it is not something that you can afford a lot. But like in the lobby of this project, uh, we probably are going to have a, a, a kind of like a nice green and a little higher, so kiddos cannot touch it. 
you know, hopefully adults respect it. <laughs> um, we're going to recess it a little bit so they understand this is not for you to be picking or to call it this, but you never know whom humans will behave so different. So, um, but yes, I, I really recommend that garden on, um, on the wall is our favorite. Okay, um, and then do you know about um, materials, um, the material bank? Okay. Material bank is a place that you can order any samples you want to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And then, and then they give you back if you want to send it back. And, you know, the so go through material bank if you want to have a sample for your project. Yes, yes, yes. We actually went through that last week. So that was yeah, really it's great. I love material bank. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you. I'll look into that one. I think we had another question in the chat. Um, Liz was asking if you have any recommendations on um, how we should prioritize getting our own certifications, if we should get LEED certified or well certified, how should we make that decision? Well, it um, they're both important. You know, I myself, I'm actually studying for LEED, um, not for LEED, for um, the well. Um, you know, I am, I won't tell you my age, but I could be your mother probably, I'm sure. Uh, but um, I am, um, the lead is just too much for me, but uh, well, I know so much about it that I feel like I'm reading about, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, but what I need to learn is those, um, you know, per, per second, you know, all of the numbers, you know, because that's how you're going to be tested, if you know, the PSIs, you know, the everything else, so that's what I'm working on, but I am, I will probably recommend you to do well first, because well is extremely comprehensive into everything. Um, you know, even going to the nutrition where you're going to offer, like one of the things that we are when doing well, we offer all of our um, staff um, fresh fruit and vegetables. It's just, it's free. I mean, you just always in every floor and every office of HKS, there's always a bowl of fruit of the month. You know, sometimes it's apples, sometimes oranges and bananas. And there is always fruit available, uh, fresh fruit available in our spaces. Um, it is just important to, to do that. So I will um, advise to do um, well and then lead. Now, granted that I do it more sometimes for the certification, because if you go to a big firm, you will have people dedicated to go through lead and dedicated to go through well. And so like it, it's called the ESG and it's for sustainability in our group. Um, and then we put fees for them, right? Because there is a lot, and, but you as designer give them a lot of the, um, you, you know, you, you write down, okay, we selected rubber floor because da da da, but they, they said, okay, how many square feet of rubber floor we have? 200,000 square feet of rubber floor. So that takes for four points, two points, you know, they do the calculation. You will have to do the calculation. The same thing on well, you know, um, I wouldn't have to document anything. I just need to make sure that whatever we're doing, it is in compliance with that. Awesome. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to ask or type it in the chat. That works fine, too. Or you can send them through Olivia. She and I can connect with Diana, and I'd be happy to. And then I offer also, um, if you guys are working on a project and you're looking for something in particular, like, for example, a recommendation of that, please let me know um, through Olivia. And then I'll be happy to send you um you know, uh, manufacturers, for example, because we been in the industry for so long, we, we know so many awesome manufacturers out there, you know, like one, I have to tell you, whenever you're doing something cool design, go to a manufacturer group called Yellow Goat. I know it's funny, Yellow Goat is a lighting, is between lighting and artwork. And when you're looking for a statement piece for your and now you said you, you're in college so you don't have to worry about the price <laughs> love it because you can I mean and go through the hospitality now that you said you're doing the hospitality um yeah. and lighting in hospitality is really the key you know how you can are gonna make the pop and things go to the yellow gold and then go to the hospitality um 
portfolio that they have. Oh, girl, I tell you what, I mean, I, I'm going to put, and I actually, I, we went through that, and, and if it's in healthcare, I don't care. I'm putting it on my, because it gives it a different flair, you know, but they have, so if you ever want to make something look fantastic, go to Yellow Goat. Awesome. I know it's a funny, it's a funny name, isn't it? Yellow Goat, yeah. But just type yellow gold lighting. Um, I don't know if you type yellow gold where you get, but you know, just the yellow gold lighting. Yeah, they are awesome. Now they're also like a hundred thousand dollar lamp, you know, any picture, but you don't have to worry about it right now. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any other favorite manufacturers off the top of your head? Um, um, for fluorine. For fluorine, I am. You know, Tarket bought um, so many manufacturers, you know, now Tandos. For carpet, I really like Tandos. The old Tandos now is called Tarket uh, because they bought it. Um, Nora was purchased by Interface. So in, in flooring, I like Mondo. Mondo, I believe is from Switzerland. Mondo, M-O-N-D-O-N for Robert Flooring um, because it has, um, sounds weird, this name, Vulcanized finish is like the Vulcans, you know, I feel like beat me up, Scotty. It's called Vulcanized finish. And the top of it, they rub it with a special uh, kind of diamond edge. And so it is already, the bacteria doesn't stay there. So I like the Mondo. When I'm looking into rubber floors, I like Mondo and I like Nora as well. But there's always like Ropi. So wherever we can, we try to do uh, rubber because it's healthier. Now, um, Shy Industry has come with a couple of PVC freeze um, vinyl floors. Um, I also am another material that I absolutely love is porcelanosa. For tiles, it's a Spanish company. Oh my God. And then you in hospitality, go to porcelanosa for the tiles, tiles in your bathroom. They're awesome. Porcelanosa. Awesome. Porcelanosa. That's like porcelana. Yeah, let me just write it here in the chat. Okay. Because I was actually looking at that from my bathroom. I know. I am, we're doing a remodeling. We bought a farm and we're doing a, a remodeling on the house. And because I, I specify so much of them and I know the people, they're giving me such an incredible discount that I'm like, how can I not use porcelanosa? And I am like, in this farmhouse having porcelanosa tile and all. <laughs> but I got it in the same price as a doll tile for crying out loud. How can I not have porcelanosa on my bathroom? <laughs> so yeah, but so porcelanosa is fantastic. Porcelanosa. Mm -hmm. They're from Spain. Cool, awesome. And they're also, have a great portfolio. I actually get a lot of my design ideas from their portfolio. Really? That's right. Really it, it is residential, but um, they, they are, you know, because in Europe and Spain, they're, they're very clean design. There's no fussiness. And that's where I like to, I have a tendency. And even if it's for residential, it's just so lovely how everything is detailed that I get my inspiration from that. And Yellow Go too, because they're done these remarkable projects. I might be uh, the light fixtures, but the reception desk that is underneath is absolutely gorgeous too. So I might use that as an inspiration image, image too. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you so much for all this. Absolutely, Diary. Well, it's, it's been a pleasure being here. And um, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'd be happy to share your email and any information you absolutely. want. Absolutely. Yes. Students. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a great thank day. You so thank you. Bye -bye. You as well. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, everyone.